welcome to this uh, book launch. It's um, not a first event online, but it's the first one for a book that we wanted very much to launch in person. And um, before we uh, go into presenting a little bit the book and having a bit of a conversation on the different perspectives on its relevance and uh, I welcome our guests. Uh, first of all, uh, Mila Lukic, who has kindly agreed to also facilitate a bit uh, this event uh, with us. Mila is a member of the Advisory Council on Youth of the Council of Europe, and so she will be bringing the perspectives of youth organizations. We also have uh, Director Matthias Gruden from the Council of Europe, and we have Babis Papayanu from the European Commission, the Youth Unit. And um, so Lana, maybe we can start with uh, presenting a little bit the manual. And I will start of course with how it all, um, this journey started. In 2019, uh, it was 10 years since the first youth policy manual was published by the Youth Partnership. Um, that first manual was quite an important tool in many countries. Many countries used it as a basis, as a reference, as a guidance for developing, for reviewing, for uh, putting in place poly youth policy, youth strategies uh, at national level. And of course, 10 years have passed and many things have changed. Things have become much more complex. We know a little bit more that youth policy is not uh, an A to Z trip that is very linear, but rather it's circular, it starts, it stops. There are champions in youth policy, but there are also um, maybe blockages and barriers. And we collected a lot of evidence in the last years. There is uh, the EQIP knowledge collection, the members of pool of European youth researchers have helped us understand more, for example, about evidence, about evaluation in policy making. And we also have the youth wiki database that the European Commission has been developing. So all of that has been showing that there is a big complexity and diversity of policy making, not only in the 27 or at the time when we started 28 EU member states, but even in the 50 countries that are part of the European Cultural Convention, which our project covers. So this new manual was started at the end of 2019 with this idea in mind. It's time to bring all that knowledge back on the table and organize it and bring it to policymakers uh, in all contexts, in local, in national contexts, and present this diversity of approaches and still focus, try to identify what constitutes the core of policy when people start to think about it seriously. What is the role of evidence and learning? Uh, next, Lana. And that's how this new manual was born. We, start, we organized it in five parts. We had quite a good consultation process with people from the EU stakeholders, from the Council of Europe, um, the statutory body representatives, and all the actors in, uh, at different levels. We had policymakers and youth organizations telling us what was important to them. So the first part, uh, presents of the manual presents the concepts and ideas. And you see here perhaps one of the few diagrams in the manual which talks about the dynamics of policy making from decision to delivery, debate, development, and constant improvement. Um, it also talks about different approaches depending on the way the system is organized in a country. And very importantly, it talks about the fact that policy making is not an, or a continuous process. It can have its hurdles and its, its difficult moments. Next, uh, part two of the manual presents the landscape and the examples of national youth policy governance, 
how it's implemented, different systems and infrastructure that different countries have put in place, what type of funding exists for youth policy, and how evidence and accountability is taken into account, in particular, drawing on our research on youth policy evaluation. Part three of the manual presents some of the, I would say, references for national initiatives. Where should you look and who should you be talking with if you would like to bring international governance and, st and standards into your uh, initiatives? So we are presenting very briefly the European Union, the Council of Europe, uh, the role and the support the partnership can give the United Nations. And of course, we are also giving a place and highlighting the role of the European Youth Forum as a representative of youth organizations. Part four is probably the beginning of what will become in the future a separate uh, toolkit. And that is, it looks at instruments and practices in uh, themes that have been at the core of European policy debates. So you see here participation and active citizenship, youth information, volunteering and youth work, mobility, social inclusion, access to rights and digitalization. Is this list complete? It's always a question. What will be next? Probably in the next round of the, of the next manual, it remains to be seen. So, this is uh, briefly about the manual. At the end, we close with some ideas of what works. These are questions rather than ideas. The manual prompts throughout the different chapters questions for reflection. And we are already in process of drafting a toolkit to support that implementation. And with this brief introduction, I invite you to read it. It's online. And I also hand over to Mila to first invite her to reflect from her perspective of a representative of youth organizations, why such a manual is useful, and then to take forward our event. Thank you so much, Tanya. I hope you can hear me well. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, well, first of all, many thanks to the, to the youth partnership who, who invited me to partake in today's event. Uh, I'm super excited about this launch. Um, as uh, Tanya mentioned, I've been part of the expert group that works on the development of the Youth Policy Manual, and it was really an honor to, to represent the Advisory Council on Youth in this group and feed this youth organizational uh, perspective into the manual. I honestly believe it kind of came at the right moment, um, as, as we have learned so many new things about youth participation and policymaking in the past year and a half. Um, that is ever since the pandemic started. But even before that, in, in, in the previous years, we witnessed how the policymaking processes, especially in the field of youth, kind of grew and evolved and changed um, and became an, in, a very important part of every uh, a young person's life. Um, we have seen also how um, different youth organizations, either the local ones, the national or the European ones, gained more recognition um, for, for what they do in the field of youth and how their points of view are becoming even more involved in the policymaking, uh, as well as other youth-centric or, or youth-oriented activities. Um, so when it comes to my personal impressions from, from this process and about this manual, I, I do remember that one of the first dilemmas that we had in the expert group was who to intend this manual for, like who are we writing it for? Um, and in the end of the discussion, we realized that after so many years, after such a long time, we should address everyone basically from the decision makers through young people and their organizations, all the way to uh, youth workers, the researchers, other professionals in the field of youth. And for me, this was particularly important because I do believe that the policy making and the policy development processes should be inclusive as, as much as possible um, and, and should be based on this co-creation, this exchange of knowledge, the expertise, the ideas, learning from one another. Um, it should be a co-managed process in, in which everyone is kind of given the space to, to voice their standpoints and partake in the dialogue. Um, and when I say everyone, I primarily mean the young people and their organizations, so their representatives. Um, I remember that in one of the events that I attended earlier this year, a young participant said, 
um, and nothing about us without us. And it really resonated me with me because you cannot make a good and impactful youth policy without the participation of, of young people. Um, therefore, uh, I, I think the manual is important in regards to its practical applicability and how we will how it will practically tackle different areas of youth policy making, um, because it will give us uh, useful guidelines on on how to develop develop these informed youth policies, um, where where the young uh, young people's perspective are are seated at the front row. Um, and I think it will be quite beneficial, um, especially to the newcomers in, in the youth policy field, uh, because it, it will enable them to easily understand what youth policy entails um, and how it changes over time, because it's a dynamic process. Um, but it also will provide them with specific examples of the governance structures and models that allow young people to take an equal decision making power in the, poli in the policy making. Um, and uh, also allow them to replicate all those examples, either on the local or national uh, uh, level as participatory models uh, for, for young people to be involved. And another thing that I would like to highlight, uh, uh, which I like specifically about the, the manual, is it, it tells us um, how important it is to gather and nurture and use the, the knowledge about young people and, and the youth knowledge in, in general. Um, because young people uh, are, at, at least this is my opinion, um, they are becoming more aware of the local, national, and the European context uh, they, they live in, which makes them excellent partners for, for the policymaking processes and, and the development of different public policies. So all the perspectives and experiences of youth organizations, either on the local or national level, should be kind of considered when working on, on a youth policy because these are the people who work closely with young people um, in the field, so on the terrain, um, and therefore have the relevant data or the information necessary to inform our policymaking process. Uh, moreover, they are the ones who will uh, provide us with a fresh set of eyes, so to say, um, a critical one, but a constructive one. Um, and their contributions could lead to purposeful youth policy uh, uh, making because they will help the policy make, makers better understand the needs, the positions and the challenges that young people face uh, and the way uh, they are uh, mobilized and, and actively engaged in such processes. So I really think it was about time to, to receive this new youth policy manual because um, I do believe that it will genuinely help different stakeholders in the field of youth to make better policies, uh, uh, better informed policies uh, in the field of youth and apply the best examples there are uh, to make such processes uh, not only as inclusive as possible, but also sustainable on the, on the long run. So um, yeah. I think I, I, I spoke enough um, and uh, um, speaking uh, also of the decision makers and the policy makers, uh, I'm really honored to, to be speaking to the two representatives of um, uh, different institutions and, and uh, governmental organizations uh, with me today, Mr. Matthias Gruden and Mr. Babis Papayano. I, I hope I pronounced that well. Um, so we have the Director of Democratic Participation at the Council of Europe, Mr. Matthias Gruden, today with us. Um, and um, uh, Mr. Babis, who is the member of the Youth Unit at the DG Act, the DG for Education, Youth, Sports and Culture, uh, who will also take their time to um, kind of reflect on the manual from a perspective of the policymakers, or as I like to call it, the institutional side of the youth policymaking coin. Um, so maybe to begin with, uh, uh, I'd like to invite Mr. Gruden to, uh, to tell us a bit more about why this policy manual is relevant for the, for the uh, Council of Europe member states in the, and in the context of the European cooperation. Like how do you, how do you uh, see member states and, and European actors using this manual um, from, from today onward? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hi, Mila. And the pleasure and delight is, is mine to be here uh, with you and Babis and everybody else um, to, to mark the publication of this, of this manual. It's really nice to be here to launch this together with you and, and Babis. Um, we have spoken again and again and trying to um, convey that message, um, how important is youth partnership 
because it reflects the close ties um, and close interest um, between the two partners in the partnership. Um, and I think that uh, this event where we are uh, both participating in launching a reference manual is one example, one reflection, illustration of our very close collaboration. Analogies are always uh, imperfect and, and, and uh, um, um, maybe uh, misleading, but you know, policy making is like cooking. Um, it takes a lot of things uh, to get it right. There are ways uh, to get it wrong and we've been concocting some really uh, good uh, stuff and excellent dishes for the last 50 years in the Council of Europe. Um, and, and doing it together and doing it for uh, our member states, helping them um, through the policy assistance in, 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 um, in adopting uh, youth policies um, at home. Um, and we'll continue to do that. But, uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, it's simply a good way to look at those things and say, maybe we can uh, disseminate these things and maybe we can codify these things, maybe we can bring all this experience uh, together and find ways to make it even more useful. So it's like a cookbook, if you want. Uh, the manual um, that uh, everybody interested in, the, in this um, fascinating cuisine of, of, of uh, congregating youth policies can take in uh, his or her hand and, and, and use it. I think it reflects um, a lot of things, what a good um, um, policy uh, manual should do. It's not pres prescriptive. It's not something where you will have to follow every single little um, instruction to the very detail. Um, I think it's something that you can take and use in different settings, in different national contexts, taking into account all the specificities that exist uh, in terms of national uh, infrastructure, conditions, needs, uh, financing sources, and then adapted the recipe to that in order to have the final outcome, which nevertheless, with all the differences, is meant to um, be based on the values of the Council of Europe, uh, human rights and democratic values, um, and reflects the Council of Europe standards in the area of youth policy, youth participation, for example, youth people's access to rights and social inclusion, all those. So that's really, I mean, uh, helping everybody involved uh, in trying to put together a process, uh, helping him in, along or her and them along the way uh, to, to, to finally come to, the, to, the, to the, uh, this ultimate outcome, the policy that will manage to achieve the uh, objectives we're all pursuing in a different ways different settings, different contexts, but always with this um, same uh, common objective of reflecting both the council of values and the standards in youth policy. And why it is important that it comes out now, I think the title says that it was about time. Couldn't agree with you more, literally. <laughs> Um, and, and from the perspective of the European Commission and, and, and the DG uh, um, for uh, AC, um, as I said, we have Mr. Babis with us. So, Mr. Babis, what do you think? Like, why why is this manual important and relevant for for the member states of the EU? How will it help them make better youth policies in in, in the future? Yeah, uh, really interesting question, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, for the invitation and uh, the discussion that we have today. Uh, starting um, and before going to to. To answer to you, Mila, I would like to mention that uh, uh, this edition is really interesting. Not not only um, not, not not only because of the not uh, because the the writers uh, uh, update uh, uh, the information about the youth policy and uh, create the the youth policy manual, but uh, but also for a. Um, for a special reason and has to do with the original 2009 edition. Um, and uh, practically, as it says also in the very first page, this edition is a, is a honor and a tribute to our friend uh, Finn Destant, who is not anymore with us. And uh, he was one of the uh, very, um, I can say, active uh, youth workers and persons that uh, contribute to 
the development of the European youth policy in the last uh, years. So starting with that, uh, I can say that uh, for, from, from uh, the, the side of the European Commission, the, um, the edition is a practical tool and uh, describes steps for building youth policy from local to European level. Uh, at the same time, it's a fresh, updated and uh, informed guideline uh, for everyone who's interested in to support youth policy. And uh, I can mention and I can underline the, the word practical. Uh, in the most of the cases, what is missing from, from what we are doing in our beautiful youth policy sector is the practicality. Um, the manual is giving all the information about uh, the, the, the support for both civil society organizations um, and, uh, and member states and the, the, the governments who are interested to involve. In the most of the cases, uh, when, uh, when someone, um, and I can say a government, a municipality, a youth stakeholder is coming to us, is coming to the European Commission, asking for, for the practical steps, for the, for the starting point for building youth policy, uh, we are proposing a list of uh, information, web links, uh, web links uh, uh, good practices, guides, and, uh, and the manual is, is including all those information and works as a good uh, starting point, especially for beginners on youth policy development. Um, also because there is a collection of information on, uh, on uh, what um, on the same topic, on the same of, of, uh, of youth is taking place from the European Union and the Council of Europe. Um, the, interest, the interesting part are, uh, are going to, to, to do a, a very, a very uh, light exercise on uh, um, how to, to build youth policy in Europe, how to bridge youth policy in Europe and how to connect what, uh, what is happening at the level of the European Union and at the level of the Council of Europe. And practically also this is the role of the, of the partnership, of the youth partnership. Um, I, can say, I can say that there are some uh, interesting uh, tools like the youth policy clock, uh, a model presented in the manual that I found it very interesting as well as the, the need for the support of, of youth work, the way to, to bring youth policy next to young people. And um, for, for us, um, I believe that uh, for the European Commission, what is, uh, what is interesting also is uh, for the um, member states that they are interested to go deeper in, uh, in youth policy and, uh, and they are interesting for connecting parts that they are taking place in, 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 uh, in a national level. The manual can be a good guideline for that. Um, Practically, practically, and as you know, uh, the, the next year, it will be the, the year for European youth announced by the European Commission president uh, on the 15th of, uh, of um, uh, September. And uh, we believe that also with uh, our announcements in the next, uh, in the next period, uh, we will be really happy and we will uh, contribute also um, in parallel with uh, the framework of the manual in, um, in uh, the support of, uh, of uh, building uh, youth policy in, uh, in uh, member states and also to go deeper uh, in this period after the pandemic and, and in the period what we call the, the recovery area. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I really like how you pointed out the, the practicality of, of the manual because I also think that manual as such should be uh, should be providing these specific steps um but also be flexible in a way to leave the space for um, like on the spot uh, interventions and and uh, um, flexibility to to accommodate to the needs of of the young people and and all the other actors in the in this participatory policy making processes um, and speaking of, of the involvement of, of young people, um, we did say that it's one of the main principles for, for making youth policies. Um, and uh, we have uh, briefly touched upon how important that is for, for informed policy making. So um, I, I have a question for both of you, uh, basically, 
uh, how do you see this manual supporting the advancement of, of youth involvement in the policy making processes in, in the future? Because um, we tend to we tend to promote the leave no one behind and and the inclusion and th this inclusion uh, element of the policy making. So um, and and yet not everyone gets that seat at the table. Um, so how do you see this manual helping different actors in advancing this youth participation in the policy making? Maybe Mr. Gruden can can start and then we can come back to Mr. Babis. Yeah, uh, before that, just one thing that, that crossed my mind also when I was uh, listening to Babish and, 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 and to you. Um, and Tanya mentioned that this is not the first, it's the second manual that we are producing. One uh, came up uh, uh, 12 years ago and um, it, was a, it was a very good and I think much appreciated um, tool, uh, but at risk of all doing my analogy, uh, we all know the, the curse of the first pancake. Uh, it was good, but it was things uh, that were missing. There are things that uh, needed to be to be improved and perfected. And in a way, that new manual um, is building on the 2009 manual, but really also reflecting some of the things that were left out at the time, but in particular, a lot of things that we have learned between 2009 and 2012. So it's more complete, more elaborated, and I think also uh, um, therefore more 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 useful tool to do exactly what your question was about, uh, advance um, um, our uh, um, cells in, in that um, imperative objective of, of um, uh, young people's participation. I mean, what a manual can do, you know, um, young people's participation is something that we all agree about. You know, it's one of those things that uh, uh, everybody will only have fond words and, and, and warm uh, uh, expressions about. But as we see in reality, uh, where we are often stuck is between that general declarations of, um, of, 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 of um, um, support uh, to actually um, making a difference for young people uh, in reality, in their daily life, in different contexts where uh, they are still facing numerous op, uh, obstructions, difficulties, uh, hindrances in 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 their in their participation. So um, the the manual, um, which you know also reflects the Council of Europe's really fifty years experience in I think one of the most um, elaborated and effective and 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 far-reaching. Um, mechanisms for young people's participation, the co-management procedure, co-management in the decision making, um, is 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 that good practice of shared governance that the manual then is is sort of breaking down in the necessary policy ingredients that need to be put in place in order to be replicated, not identically, but in uh, in, in different settings at at at, at national um, and local level. So uh, it's something that helps to um, translate and transmit all the solutions, all the approaches, all the experience that we have accumulated to these national and local uh, levels and, 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 and provide the um, uh, reference uh, to the procedures, the ideas, the solutions, the advice, the, the yardstick to measure you and evaluate your own effectiveness in providing, uh, uh, in, in, in delivering, in, in preparing those policies and implementing those policies um, and help you to go from visions to actual standards that are making a difference in the uh, uh, participation of young people in every of these um, eight areas that the manual is, uh, uh, is dealing with and that the Tanya uh, mentioned from um, information services, social inclusion, uh, youth work, uh, digitalization, and others. Thank you. Um, and, and youth participation was also at the core, of, well, is at the core of the EU youth dialogue as, as another inclusive process. So we've mentioned the co-management principle that we have here at the Council of Europe, but at the level of the European Union, 
and what the European Commission is doing. We, we do have um, other principles and structures and mechanisms, methods, proven methods that, that are working um, towards involving young people and advancing their participation. So, Mr. Babis, uh, how do you think that the manual is helping uh, advance that even further and, and promote young, uh, young people's participation as such? I can, of course, uh, agree with Matthias that uh, that for both organizations, the Council of Europe and the European Union, uh, youth participation is a crucial topic. And uh, uh, I can say that uh, um, yeah, for us, youth participation um, in uh, policy making is, in, is one of the main priorities. And we invest a lot in the last decades from the times of the white paper on youth back on the year 2000 and 2001. That means the last 20 years. Um, um, also in the present uh, EU youth strategy and under the, the um, engaged priority, European Commission is supporting, uh, encouraging and promoting uh, inclusive participation um, of uh, all young people in society and democratic process. But then in the manual, um, there are a lot of information on uh, not only not only for what the international organizations, the two organizations, uh, European Union and the Council of Europe are doing uh, on the topic of active youth participation uh, in policy maker, uh, but also some uh, good examples, but uh, also some good methodology of how to and a good methodology for how to start, uh, implement or start to make a pilot at the level of everyone. It doesn't matter if you are an NGO, a municipality, a government or who, or a youth stakeholder. So um, uh, I can say that, um, yes, it's really good that uh, both organizations had uh, have um, uh, youth uh, uh, participation as a in the, in the policymaker as a high priority. But uh, again, I'm going to the practical part of the manual and why, why this is uh, interesting for connecting with the, the political priority and the theoretical priority of, 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 of both organizations is, is uh, the way that the manual is, uh, is built. It and uh, and uh, I can say that uh, the the debate models, the cross-sectoral dimension of youth policy, the evidence-based policy, which is an interesting thing, uh, 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 the evidence-based uh, policy development are some of the of the of the parts of the of the manual that really can uh, support whoever is interesting to develop uh, um, uh, youth policy maker making in local regional, national, or, or European level. Uh, also, I found it very interesting the, the fact that um, the fact that at the end of, the, of its, uh, of its uh, chapter, uh, there is uh, a part with these uh, questions for reflection uh, where, where, where someone can, where anyone can put his, uh, his self in between of the, of, of, of the questions, how can I do that? What is your your conditions on that? What are your national uh, conditions? What are the, the local conditions on the topic uh, before uh, explained? Uh, so I have the feeling that uh, that uh, the manual again again is giving us uh, the 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 way to develop the youth participation in policy making uh, um, and um, and and bridging again the, the uh, priorities of the two organizations and uh, supporting practically the way that the, the young people are asking. And, and uh, this is the good thing that the young people in our times are asking for more uh, youth uh, participation and more involvement in the policy making all over, all over Europe. And we are happy because we believe that also from our side from the side of the of the of the union uh, as you say mila with uh, with uh, our initiatives the eu youth dialogue the european youth goals we are supporting the 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 requests for more active participation in uh, in the policy making 
and in the co-management of the youth uh, uh, policy in uh, local, regional, and uh, uh, national and European level. And I have the feeling that, again, the manual is, uh, is a positive supporter for anyone who is interested to involve. Thank you very much. Um, I, I just want to stress out that um, our viewers, our audience, can um, uh, pop their questions, leave their questions in the in the chat box, in the chat option, because uh, we do have a uh, Q and A session uh, at the end of this small discussion, uh, and we will um, feel free to to take up your questions and uh, for for our speakers today. Um, and going back to the uh, um, uh, to, to our discussion and, and the manual, um, although, you know, I, I kind of consider the youth participation a two-way street. Um, on one hand, yes, young people can ask for their seat at the table, can ask for more participation, can ask to be more involved. Well, on the other hand, the, the policymakers, so the institutions, should allow us uh, that seat at the table should uh, enable us and, and support us in that quest to, to search for our role in the decision making and policy making processes. However, we do know that um, some topics or issues that young people want to engage with um, are sometimes missing or are not reflected upon enough in, in the policies that we make. Um, so my question to you is, how can youth policy be stronger in, in cross-sectorial cooperation, in this cross-sectorial discussion? How can we involve the uh, important topics that are sometimes unintentionally maybe just left out, uh, which young people are, on the other hand, very passionate about? I'm talking about climate justice, the environment, the employment, housing, so other, other uh, uh, things apart from pure um, um, participation, so to speak. So maybe first we get the perspective of the Council of Europe. Well, I don't know if I can provide the perspective of the Council of Europe. I'll try to <laughs> uh, share some of my, my thoughts on that. Um, I think when we're talking about how to um, increase youth participation in cross-sectoral cooperation, uh, we should add to it also um, the question why we should do it. I think when we have the answers why, uh, it will perhaps help us to um, um, be more effective in, in, in finding how. Um, and and um, um, managing to to provide us with arguments that should help us to advance in that. I remember what I mean. I just recall what you said at the beginning. Somebody, a young person, said when he, uh, um, uh, this was discussed, nothing about us without us, and it has a nice ring to it. And I, I also think it should be the absolute minimum of what we should um, expect and demand from uh, youth participation. I mean, clearly. Uh, when the decisions are being taken that affect young people, they should not be taken without them. But then I think we can also zoom out and we can also conclude that there's nothing that is really not also about young people. Um, and there I think we come to, 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 to a new level where we need to start to look at the, I mean, there is, a, of course, the side of it uh, that is simply the question of equality and fairness. Uh, that a segment of population is not left out of decision making, participation decision making on issues that are directly affecting them and their lives. But then there's also something else. I think we also need to move from looking at this as something that is good for young people, important for young people, fair to young people, um, a concession to young people or a favor to young people, to something that is actually a strategic resource for a society. Uh, it's not just that the young people are going to be better off and feel better and be more integrated and be, uh, uh, and they will be. All these are very important issues. It's also is that we need that contribution um, uh, in order to find responses on issues that you have already mentioned from um, functioning of our democracies, environment, climate justice, digital transformation, um, social issues, healthcare, housing we simply not be able to get the right answers if we exclude such an important, if we do not provide uh, effective, functioning, comprehensive means of participation of young people in, 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 in this search for, for, uh, uh, for solution. Without that perspective, without experience, without the creativity, without bringing into their stake to that, uh, will simply fail. And I think that's the message that we should be also. The manual is uh, uh, um, 
not there for the authorities to help the young people only. It's for our member states to help themselves. It's for our organizations to help themselves. It's an investment in our capacity to deal with the uh, global issues and challenges that we're all faced with. It's helping us to, um, to add another asset, to add another very important component into our uh, um, uh, search for, for, for those solutions. Uh, it will require, of course, from young people, um, uh, the, 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 they, they manage to um, articulate uh, their views, their voice, they, in, in, in a way to, to, to contribute to this discussion. We also know that they are not all, um, that the young people are as diverse as the rest of the society is. So there's a ways of how to organize this and the manual I think can help that, that can, can, can put the, uh, uh, create the foundations for a, for, a, for a really increased full uh, youth participation also on those cross-sexual cooperation, not just an issue of directly affecting related to youth, but on all spectrum of, of, of issues, challenges that we face as societies. I completely agree with you. Whenever I think of, of youth policy, I don't specifically just mean, for example, the I don't know, national strategy for, for youth or the local youth plan, youth action plan. I really think in, in diverse manner um, uh, as a youth policy, as a, as a public policy that covers an array of, of different things that are important uh, for young people, that tackle young people's life uh, lives and where young people should have a say, sort of, sort of say. Um, and um, I'd like to hear also from, from Mr. Babis on, on this question, like how can we advance the, the cross-sectorial cooperation for, um, in, in the field of youth and what can, um, what can the member states do in that remark? Really interesting question. Okay, uh, first of all, I must say that uh, at the level of the European Union, we started to involve in youth policy uh, I must say late, I mean, in the mid 80s, it was the first initiatives for youth policy and practically, practically youth policy developed slowly in the 90s and, uh, and uh, after, after the year 2000. So it is an ongoing process and uh, we are learning and in every programming period, we are trying uh, to include lessons learned to include what the, the people, the young people need from, from, from us and, and uh, what the young people need also in their countries, in their local societies in order to put these things as a priority and to ask the member states to, uh, to include in their policies. Um, practically in the European Union level, we started to discuss the topic of cross-sectorial cooperation on, on youth uh, the last 10 years because uh, we understand that the youth policy and youth issues cannot be a folder uh, only of uh, DGEAC where I'm working and the youth unit. Um, it is obvious that, uh, yes, for sure, Erasmus+, Plus, European Solidarity Corps, uh, the, and uh, all the other youth programs, initiatives and tools, uh, supporting youth mobility exchanges and volunteerism are, are uh, not covering all the questions, requests, and needs of the young people in Europe. Um, you said also before, and also, and also Matthias mentioned that uh, there is a list of topics like health, housing, employment, climate justice, uh, and I can add uh, new topics that came in our beautiful continent the last uh, uh, five or, or six years, like uh, the, the young immigrants and, uh, and uh, the, the topics of the social inclusion uh, that they are really at the top of the agenda, or even, even the, the very new thing that we are discussing the last period, this digital transformation and what that means practically for young people and for, for our societies and, uh, and for how, how, how we need to, how we can, we can build the next steps. So the, uh, so uh, here in the European Union, we are making a very interesting pilot on these uh, topics and on this uh, cross-sectorial um, uh, cooperation. Um, um, Two years ago, European Union took the decision for the creation of the of the position of the EU Youth Coordinator, a person that will connect horizontal 
all DGs and EU, and EU agencies dealing on youth. And at the same time, a person who will map uh, the condition uh, and uh, react on behalf of the European Union uh, also to the um, external partners and, and stakeholders. And uh, we are really happy because uh, from uh, June 2021, I mean, some months ago, uh, five months ago, uh, we have um, in our youth unit here, uh, Biljana Sirakova, who is the first EU youth coordinator, a colleague who is working uh, on, uh, on, on bridging this cross-sectorial part both inside the European Union and inside the Commission, but also um, um, in cooperation with the, with the external partners. Um, but I can share with you an interesting information that um, now we are preparing the European Union Youth Report. Uh, for the year report is for the years 2019-2021, uh, the first three years of the implementation of the of the new uh, EU youth strategy, and uh, for the first time in the in the um, EU youth report, we are going to to report not only about DGAC and what are the statistics, the profits, and the good practices of, of uh, the Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps. But we are going to report also for what the other DGs, the other parts of the European commissions are doing, developing on youth. And um, it's, uh, it's the first time that we're working on this cross-sectorial part, and we are going to create this cross-sectorial picture of EU a youth policy. Um, and um, I can say that the first results are really impressive because we we map that um, other agencies and other other parts of the European Commission and other parts of the European Union are doing brilliant jobs. Uh, job and uh, brilliant, they have brilliant initiatives on young people that practically in the past we never reported and we never mapped and we never um, presented as a good practice. Uh, finally, I can say that um, that in the coming conference of the future of Europe, which is a, a, a process uh, uh, of 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 uh, European scale uh, uh, debate with the citizens. Um, it, it, it practically is an opportunity again for for cross sectorial uh, youth dialogue or let's say youth cross sectorial dialogue on youth because uh, youth is one of the 10 priorities of the conference and uh, the proposals ideas and uh, and problems mentioned by young people already in the first phase of of uh, this uh, european de debate um, confirm the need uh, to support more cross-sectorial logic on uh, the development of uh, youth policy. Uh, I must say also that uh, um, closing this, uh, that the, the youth knowledge books of the, of the youth partnership of uh, uh, European Union and the Council of Europe, um, uh, in general, it's not only a good example with information analysis and results on the topic of youth, but also a good basis for the development of cross-sectorial policy in the youth uh, field uh, in local, national, and uh, European level. And I would like again uh, to ask and to encourage uh, also our participants here to um, to read and to and to uh, analyze uh, based on their standards the new edition. And uh, finally, I would like also from here to thank uh, uh, Howard, uh, Max, and Zara for uh, the work uh, that they did and uh, that we are presenting today. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for pointing out um, the um, um, amazing work that the European Commission is doing in in this sense. I'm really looking forward. I, I had no clue about the uh, report that you're compiling um, mm. um, on the youth in, in, involved in other DGs. So I'm really looking forward to that, but also on the um, to the outcomes of the conference on the future of Europe. 
um, that's about to take place. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I, I think I will, you know, I, I've exhausted my questions here and I know that we have some questions from the audience, from, from our viewers. Um, I just wanted to finish off with uh, uh, saying that um, I, I really hope the manual will be very useful to, to all the relevant actors in the field of youth across Europe, but specifically to those on the national and local level. Um, and that it will further the youth cooperation uh, um, and enable it to grow and evolve um, in, in the future, giving young people that primary central point in the policy making processes. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm just going to finish up there, Tanya, giving the mic back to you. Uh, I know that we have that uh, Q&A session. Thank you very much, Mila. Thank you for uh, leading this uh, exchange. Um, I also take my turn to thank the authors who, who I kindly ask to connect to the meeting if they can and follow. Uh, we will be speaking more about this manual and together uh, we will do probably a, a podcast episode about the manual. Uh, for example, I see one of the questions in the chat from Behruz. Uh, let me open the chat. Um, he's looking for a step-by-step -step process, helping a beginner to understand what he she is looking for uh, because it is too complex. So it's interesting that from something that was too simplistic, maybe too linear, we move to too complex. But uh, rest assured, we are working on multiple uh, ways of supporting policy making. Um, I just also want to highlight that one of the authors or a couple of the authors received questions from their partners uh, on other continents. Why is it from a European perspective? And this is simply because we could not uh, pretend to cover global perspectives as well as we have knowledge on uh, the initiatives of the two major institutions that uh, affect national youth policy in Europe and the themes that are driving European policy debate so far. This is why it's from a European perspective. It does not mean or imply more than that. Um, we are currently translating the manual into Russian, Serbian and French and hope to be able to launch these new uh, versions soon. Um, as you know, the partnership is running uh, a series of massive open online courses, one of them being based on the essentials of youth policy. And we are working to transform that MOOC into a self-paced learning process. And of course, the manual will feature uh, greatly there. And as I mentioned in the introduction, we are working on a ticket on a supporting methodological uh, support for working with the manual in a more practical way in participatory youth policy making. So uh, have a look at the partnership website for more resources. In the chat, I also saw that Jan wanted to make some critical remarks. Um, perhaps now would be a good moment, Jan. Thank you, Tanya, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. And also from my side, first of all, uh, Congratulations for all of you who worked uh, very hard to the uh, result of this uh, publication. So uh, um, my um, critical remarks are driven by uh, a major concern from the perspective from a um, policymaker at the national level. And before I was an, uh, I'm a youth worker. I was active on the local level, regional level, national level. I know and follow the whole history since uh, when the co-decision in 98 was established in the Council of Europe uh, uh, as the co-management system. And then uh, I um, um, was part of the development of the pre white paper process with the famous declaration of Laken uh, with the outcome in art, article uh, 165.2 uh, uh, and, and all those things. And so my concern is that, um, and 
and I share the enthusiasm of Mila uh, and many others of the of the AC. Uh, so uh, um, to have um, and to fight for equal decision making power, I totally agree with that. But I like to share some other concerns. Our democracy or democracies today are under pressure. So uh, thanks to this information, the algorithms, the monopolies, and uh, very recently, the Pandora papers uh, and all those things. So um, we have to keep that uh, more uh, broader side also in, in mind. Um, we have a lot of autocracies in Europe. I'm thinking freely on the Russian Federation, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan Belarus, and many other beautiful countries in, uh, in Europe. Eh? So uh, are they uh, ready to, or are they open to read that new publication and to, to really listen uh, to uh, yours and, and my concerns. Eh? Um, also in the EU, a little bit closer to, uh, to my home uh, and to my country, the fundamental rights are under pressure. And uh, the impact of that on our democracies is, uh, is huge. And so um, um, I'm missing in the group of authors also, um, and also in the debate, the perspective of the member states. Uh, that, that is for me the missing link, because I believe in good governance, and then you need all corners of the house and all corners of the actors, and therefore my critical remarks also. And I'm missing uh, the researchers and uh, the professors or the PhDs that study uh, and, and bring in insights from policy making, from the corner of policy making. And that is a very specific uh, discipline and I think um, in, in the next publications, and that is a, a, a suggestion, we have to bring them on board. In Belgium, in our uh, top universities, we have such uh, knowledge on board. Eh? And that is very helpful in, in the design of uh, policy making and respected by uh, young people, youth workers, uh, youth NGOs, uh, youth experts, and many others. So, but uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, make it possible to, to reflect and discuss thanks to that manual. And I, I was also charmed by the tribute to one of my good friends, uh, uh, Fini Denstadt, that was um, nice uh, to hear and to read that also. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. From what I see uh, in the chat, there are no more questions. Um, but uh, thank you for making these points on having this, uh, always trying to ensure that we reflect all the, all the perspectives in the debates. Um, as I mentioned, this is a first conversation launching the manual and we hope that we can have deeper, more in-depth conversations. Um, and while we spotlight uh, the results of uh, Paul's work, uh, trying to summarize some of the, the ideas that were shared. Perhaps uh, I invite Matias and Babis to bring their final closing remarks. Um, if I can go first, uh, and I'll be very brief because I think we're also uh, came to the end of, of, of the allocated time. Um, just perhaps to, to respond to, to Jan, um, uh, with, you know, sympathy and, and understanding. Um, I, um, he um, is um, voicing his, I think, well-founded concern about the situation that we are facing. 
a backsliding of uh, democracy um, in a number of parts of, of, of Europe, which of course has um, a very negative impact also on um, the issues that are uh, we're discussing here today. And um, um, I think that uh, this is something that uh, requires and is receiving a response also from young people. Uh, we see um, a number of actions that are taking place also in the Council of Europe, um, including the initiatives for a campaign on the revi revitalizing um, um, a pluralist uh, democracy. Um, it's also coming back to what we said before, uh, why the youth participation, cross-sectoral youth cooperation is important. Again, we see that the young people are among the first ones, not only that are alerting us to the um, dangerous degree of backsliding, democratic backsliding, but are also taking action to respond to it. So I think it just confirms um, 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 what we said before about the um, importance of, of youth participations, um, uh, how youth participation is a strategic resource in helping our societies to find um, uh, responses to the challenges and threats, including the one that we see uh, in the functioning and malfunctioning of our democratic processes. That's one thing. The other thing is also, I think that while we are going through these storms, be they health crisis and others, uh, we also, uh, uh, I think, have to be ready and prepare when we hopefully come to the point, to the stage, which Bavis before called the period of recovery, uh, where both things, the aftermath of the health crisis, but also a situation where we'll be able to reverse some of the um, trends with regard to our democracies that are of concern of us. And I think it's good and it's important that we are ready and we're able and we're there to support policymaking that will help us to take full benefit of that situation uh, when it hopefully uh, hopefully arises. Um, I just say that um, I also heard uh, remarks about um, um, missing of some steps. I think that the aspiration behind this publication was not to prepare a book uh, publication that could be put on a bookshelf, forgot about it. That's impossible because um, uh, it's a digital one, so you cannot put it on a bookshelf. That's the first thing. And the second more important one is really, I think the aspiration, the ambition was to put something um, um, much very practical, very down to earth, flexible, something that can help everybody that is involved in a policy making, implementing, uh, uh, be it a public officer, uh, be it youth organizations, be it practitioner, uh, any stakeholder, that you can take it, use it, uh, 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 and, 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 and have benefits, practical benefits from it. That was the aspiration. We'll see how successful we will be in that. Um, and thank you very much for your attention from my side. So I will uh, react uh, also to the general comments, but also to make a kind of conclusion. So, uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Jean, for for the for your your comments, and especially especially for the comment uh, "democracy under pressure." Um, I have the feeling that uh, that um, what we are doing. And we're doing both the, the European Union and the Council of Europe is not uh, is not uh, something that uh, that connected also with uh, what we call uh, the 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 people who are who are, who are uh, let's say usually following us the the youth policy the development of the youth policy is something that moves deeper and deeper and I, I have the feeling that the period of the the period of the pandemic by accident and because of the of the electronic format of the of the of the transformation of the events attracts more more young people so more young people to understand that suddenly uh, that uh, in this last two years period that there is something called European youth policy and there are initiatives and there are activities and there is also a co-management system and a co-participation system and they can apply and they can participate in a maybe in a digital format but i hope in the next in the very next period in the physical format in activities and that that includes and brings more people and new people new young people in our beautiful youth policy bubble so I have the feeling that we need to invest on that. Uh, 
and we need to 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 put at the top of the agenda the point of democracy and the quality of democracy i have the feeling that uh, yes of course the topics of the environmental crisis the climate change and uh, and uh, all these horizontal priorities um, must be at the, at the at the heart of of our discussion for the next period but uh, i believe also and i will close with that that uh, what uh, what uh, the president of of, uh, of european commission says uh, at the time of the announcement of the european year will be for us the guideline for the next period europe needs all of its youth so in basically this is the motto that we are going to work for the next period, that we need all the youth, young people of Europe. We need, of course, the young people from the neighboring countries and the whole European continent. And of course, we need also to cooperate very strong with the youth, with the organizations that uh, they are working in a global level because uh, building youth policy, it's not, uh, it's not a question of European Union or at the level of the 50 countries of the Council of Europe. So I believe that, uh, yes, there are a lot of interesting things coming in front of us. There are a lot of interesting appointments and uh, the manual can help on that. Um, of course, uh, as uh, Matthias says, it's not uh, the A and Z. It is, uh, it is a manual, it is a, it's a guideline, it is an addition. And uh, I hope that, uh, that also with, uh, with the rest of the editions that we're going to to, to announce in the next period under the partnership, but we're not going to tell uh, now uh, what we are planning. Uh, we have a very beautiful uh, plan for the period 2022-2023. And uh, I believe that, uh, that it will be really interesting also for you that you're following us. And uh, again, thank you very much for the participation. Thank you. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you, Babis, and thank you very much, Mila, for assuming this double hat, double role. Um, you've done it really well. And thanks for everyone who connected. I think it is good that we leave it at this and that we uh, leave you with the beautiful concluding drawing, which uh, we will be editing into uh, the video and upload it to our YouTube channel. So for people who could not follow today, um, they'll be able to uh, follow it later on and stay tuned. As we mentioned, there's a few initiatives around still launching more uh, linguistic versions and also more uh, methodological support around the use of the manual. So I wish you a great end of the day, um, hopefully more sun um, on all in all parts where you are connecting from and we stay in touch. <laughs>